Stray Dog Night. Hey there, everybody. Guess what? It is a Freaker Friday night. And you got Grammy Mary here, here in my rocking chair. Here, here. Here, here. That's like a toast kind of thing, ain't it? <laughs> oh, it's another scorcher out here. And it is most definitely a Friday, as an F-R-Y day. Yeah, we came close to breaking that century mark temperature-wise today, so wee-ha, it is getting toasty, which is a good thing for the wheat and all that other fun stuff, because yeah, the farmers are going, oh yeah, oh yeah, we need to get that wheat ready to cut. So, yeah, out here in Booneyville, that's what we are concerned about. And, you know, one other thing that I was really, really surprised about uh, today, and it was a very pleasant surprise. While I was at work, I work at a car dealership, as a lot of you know. And um, someone had broken down on the highway. Actually, they got just almost to the dealership when their transmission went out. And uh, got them pulled in and everything. And they were talking with the parts manager, who is an absolutely awesome young man. And actually, yeah, I can call him a young man because he's younger than my youngest. In any case, um, this young man, or they were talking with him. And then they... Uh, said that um, they were told or they had read the reviews about our dealership online as they were trying to nurse their poor vehicle in and kept seeing these wonderful reviews about Casey and myself. And it's like, okay, now you're just buttering me up. <laughs> I just kind of went, uh-huh. And I'm typing up a rental contract for them so that they can take our rental vehicle and finish on their trip because they had to be in Denver uh, this afternoon slash evening. And uh, I was kind of going, wow, okay. And uh, they kept going on and kept going on. And I finally turned around and went, okay, are you stringing me a line of BS or something just to try and get this rental car a little bit cheaper because it's working? <laughs> and they started laughing and they went, no, seriously, you go on the site and you will see. And it's like, oh, man, really? Apparently, Casey and I are getting glowing reviews over there. I, I had no idea. I'm just doing my job, trying to help people that are broke down on the highway. Make them as comfortable as possible, because trust me, it totally sucks to be broke down quite a ways from home. So, yeah, I understand how that is and how sucky it can be. Okay, let me say hey to everybody out here. Hey there, everyone over on Twitter that might be listening because Barman is the moda most bodacious barman in the whole freaking Friday world and every other world that I can imagine. And trust me, that's quite an imagination. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for tweeting me over there, darling. I am going to go ahead and close Twitter because, yes, I have been having internet issues. And I'm going to try to not press my luck. Although these internet issues, from what I understand, are not just out here in the boonies. It is also in town. People are grumbling. People are complaining. People are saying, what the hell are we paying for if it's this crappy? But <clears throat> I digress. I know, Rascal. Are you going to help me, sweetheart? I'm wearing shorts. Claws hurt. Yes, claws are always on the thighs. Thank you. And for those of you that are new to listening, yes, this is probably one of the very few shows on the radio where you can hear me talking to my critters and they will try and talk to you. <laughs> or at least Rascal will. She likes to sit on my lap and chew on the microphone and give me hugs while I'm broadcasting because she's just such a lovable little critter. Uh, let's see. Who is over on Fakey Book? I saw the lovely Mary B. Thank you, my dear, for uh, liking my little status over here. And look, Julie Campbell. Hi, Julie. How you doing, sweetheart? And I am sending you lots of love and hugs and support because I know you've had a rough go of it lately, sweetheart. And so I'm, I'm sending you positive vibes, sweetie, to kind of help you get along. 
shit happens, you know, and none of us get out of this alive, and that's what totally sucks sometimes. It's very difficult. Uh, what item do I have pending? Facebook is telling me I have one item pending. A timeline review. Well, kiss my ass, Facebook. I don't want to do a timeline review, okay? Um, owie rascal, I love you, sweetie, but claws, 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 and I'm not talking Santa. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, see, and it says there's nothing to review. Bite me, bite me, bite. No, not you, rascal. Oh, raise your hand. Yes. Oh, which reminds me, I found out the other day I am not an asshole. I am not. I am a hemorrhoid. I irritate assholes. <laughs> That is my, yes, and I am going to strive to be a hemorrhoid every day of my life. Why? Because I like being an irritant to assholes. That's why. Okay, over here on that effing site, Freedoms Network, the only place to be, as Bobby Bain puts it. Um, I see Grimmy is over here, and I also see the lovely Penny is here, and so is Mary B. So, hey there, hi there, ho there to all of you. Mary B., you're just all over the place, sweetheart. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's good to be all over the place. Um, and now, to get to those rowdy chatters. Yeah, ain't much fun being brought... No, it's not... Especially, no, it's not even fun in your driveway. You are right, Grimmy. That just totally sucks <laughs> being broke down in your driveway, which reminds me that my garage door is being a total pain in the ass. So I'm having to, I know, I know, let's hear the violins because I'm going to be a whiny ass. I have to actually manually open and close my garage door. <laughs> Oh my God, my life is so rough. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, quit whining, Grammy. Jeez, oh, Pete. Okay, over here in the RLM, right there up top, and I'm not looking because <clears throat> the other day I looked and I was totally traumatized for life because uh, I saw Asmo's underpants. And so I'm not looking today because I don't know. Some, you know, Asmo's kind of crazy and, and he, he may not be wearing any today and I would get a view that I wasn't prepared for. But Asmo is right there on top and closely behind him is Barman who is also not looking. Because, <laughs> you know, there's just some things that the mental etch-a-sketch cannot erase. Just saying. I also see the lovely Beth Z is here, as well as the one, the only, the Grimner, who is the creator of Barman and RLM and the techie guru god, but he is a god, just in case anybody, you know, questions that, he is. I know, that's why I don't piss him off. <laughs> But Grimmy is awesome, and he will be on later this evening with Balls to the Wall. And why is it Balls to the Wall this evening? Because Moose Girl once again has a life, and I'm extremely jealous. But you know what? In a few weeks, I'm going to have a life, so, eh, you know, it all works out. Moosey is festivaling this evening, so she will not be joining Grimmy. So it will not be the Freaker's Ball. It will be Balls to the Wall. Unless I call in and harass the help. You never know. Moose Girl is logged in, but I'm thinking she's probably having a very festive time right now. She's at the Blue Ox Fest, I believe. And looky there, there's the lovely Kate is also up there logged in. And I'll bet you she's probably even listening in. Hey there, lady. How you doing? Is it a scorcher in your neck of the woods, too? Because, whee! Yeah, it's warm. I am really glad I have peppermint oil because I put that in the pits before I do any kind of deodorant or anything because it helps keep me cool. Whew. And even on days like today, no. Um, oh, I'm dyslexic. Thank you, Grim. I hadn't. Yeah, you're a dog. Well, I like puppy dogs. So, uh, does your does your leg get to twitching if some if I were to scratch behind your ear? <laughs> that might be entirely too much information for most people. So let's just not go there, okay? Um, I also see trust no one is here, and yeah, sweetheart, don't you don't even trust yourself? 
You know, there's days when I think I shouldn't trust myself because I just plain can't be trust with, trusted. But I do have um, a mantra that, <clears throat> excuse me, I have developed over the last couple of months just because I've had a few things that have happened in my world that have made me develop a new mantra. And that is, I trust everybody, everybody. I trust them to behave in a nature or in a manner that is true to, or that is, um, resonates perfectly with their true nature. How's that? That's not exactly the way I said it along uh, to my brother Dave, but um, pretty close. You know, people are going to behave according to their nature. And I trust them to behave that way. I just have to figure out what the hell their nature is. So I know, do I want to stay away from you? There are some that, yeah. Hey, someone in Abu Dhabi's listening. Way cool. That's just awesome. Hey there, darling. How you doing? I hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous day. Is it Saturday in Abu Dhabi? Or is it, yeah, it would be Saturday in Abu Dhabi, wouldn't it? Hmm, I'm not sure. Um. <laughs> oh, Grimmy. That means I'd have to come visit you, which that could be fun too. I may just have to do that one of these days. In any case, um, you know, we, we need to have a RLM reunion anyway. Some kind of, yeah, because that would be fun. Oh, well. In any case, to get on with saying, hey there, hi there, ho there to everyone, I see I be Don C. I see I be Don C. Hey, that's, that's kind of, no, it doesn't rhyme. Forget it. Never mind. <laughs> I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2, the new and improved version. And how is that new and improved addition to your home, dear one? I hope she's doing quite well. And looky there, Juana Taco is here. Guess what, darling? I had a slice of taco pizza for supper tonight. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, and cold too. Because, you know, sometimes you just got to have cold pizza. It's just the way it works. I also see P. Bunyan is here as well as, okay, Salvanor is logged in, but Salvanor is sawing logs. So that's okay, darling. You're still hanging out. That's okay. We love you, sweetheart. And Solvenor will be on tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. You see, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. That's rather redundant, Grammy. And, in, and I'm speaking of myself in the third person. Wow, that means I'm not necessarily. Okay, that's obvious. Moving along. Uh, Solvenor will be on tomorrow, 10 a.m. with the Solvenor event. And I'm not sure what he's reading right now, but be sure to check it out on ucy.tv. Yeah, he's always interesting to listen to, and I absolutely love his accent. He's got the coolest, of course, I think everybody's got way cool accents, you know, except for mine. Mine's just the way I talk, but then I have other people tell me, oh, you've got a really cool accent, and I'm like, nah, you do. <laughs> How do you have an accent when you giggle? Do you have an accent when you giggle? That's one of those inquiring minds kind of things, which reminds me, I do have something I need to get to here shortly that uh, Cowboy Tech shared with me. Thank you, darling, for sharing that. I turned the sound off, but I will be reading that here in just a little bit. I also see Alias is here. Hey there, darling. How you doing on this very frying Friday? And Chloe is here. Hey, sweetheart, how you doing? I really haven't chit-chatted with you uh, yet in the RLM, so I really don't know, no, no, you very well. But hey, hi, anyway. And I see that I'm here, kind of, sort of, almost. Okay, yeah, physically, I'm here. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the lovely lady from down under, the lovely Miss Mary B., Hey there, woman. How you doing? Good morning to you. It's your Saturday, isn't it? <coughs> Let's see if it's your... Okay, it's your Saturday morning, so maybe Dubai, it's... No, it would be... We, or, I don't know. Or not... Yeah, Abu Dhabi, not Dubai. Abu Dhabi. Huh, how cool. That's just really cool. Thanks, Grim. I don't know how... Uh, well, I do. You've got, you've got all access to all that stuff. 
I I just get on here and talk. And y'all seem to listen. I don't know why. I haven't figured that out yet, but that's okay. Um Okay. I, and the thing that triggered my whole little hemorrhoid spiel is is a friend of mine over here on Facebook shared a little thing that, that says, raise your hand if you're a bit of an asshole. And like I said, no, I'm a hemorrhoid. I irritate assholes. <laughs> okay. Now, let's, oh, my AC kicked on. Wow, you know it's getting warm when the AC kicks on. Okay, yeah, I broke down. I took the cover off and cleaned it up yesterday because, whew. Scorcher. We bit warm. And I was melting. Okay, let me get to... This is the one. This is the link that Cowboy shared to me earlier. Once again, thank you, darling, for sharing that with me. Um, it is random questions. So here we go. Random question number one. What do blind people see in their dreams? You know, that that is one of those things that I've, I've honestly got to say, I have pondered that a time or two. <clears throat> and especially since I saw the movie Rocky, when he had the blind girlfriend. Uh, was that Laura Dern that played her? I believe it was. That was one of those things that... Uh, Abu Dhabi is the UAE. Ah, misplaced Americans. Well, yeah, could be. They they took a left at New Jersey, or and no, they would have to take a right at New Jersey, wouldn't they? Ah, uh, I'm wondering, was Bugs Bunny their tour guide? Bugs Bunny has a tendency to wind up go taking the scenic route from time to time and winding up in the weirdest places. Hmm. Oh, well. Carry on. So, <clears throat> what do blind people see in their dreams? I've, I've always been, I wonder if, you know, because you, you wonder if they even see colors or anything. Although, <clears throat> excuse me, once again, the, the movie Rocky, he explained to her clouds and all kinds of other really cool stuff. And it was like, wow, that is such an awesome way to explain things. Okay, question number two. Can you cry underwater? Certainly. It's just that no one sees your tears, but they, they can still see the cry face. And the cry face, I don't know anybody that makes an attractive cry face. Just saying. Question number three. As soon as it scrolls up here. So, a zebra. Is it white with black stripes? or black with white stripes. Now that one I had never pondered. And wow, I, I'm gonna have to think about that. So number four, uh, or maybe not, do birds get tickled by feathers the way we do? I kind of doubt it, kind of doubt it. Next one, why doesn't glue stick to the inside of the bottle? And another one that's an inquiring mind's kind of thing. If glue doesn't stick to the inside of the bottle, how does Teflon stick to the pan? You know, that's that's kind of where my mind goes with this kind of shit. Yeah, I just have these weird things that run, they run around in there sometimes disturbing the cobwebs. Also, why does a round pizza come in a square box? And just to be curious, because I have seen square pizzas. Would a square pizza come in a round box? In an alternate universe, maybe? And does it really matter? Because pizza's good, even cold. How about, how can you hear your thoughts when you think? Now, that this is one that I, I've never really thought of until just as I saw this question, and it was like, so then I actually started thinking about it, and I realized that I do hear myself when I'm thinking. I hear myself talking inside my head. Should I be concerned? <laughs> uh, I think maybe I should be. Okay, how about this one? Why do toasters 
always have a setting that turns a toast into a horrible crisp, which no decent human being would eat. I always wondered that. Why do toasters have the uh, meteorite setting? Why do they have solid lava? I, I always wondered that. And why, if they have that, do they say, okay, well, it's for thicker slices of bread or it's for bagels or for whatever, and yet the slots aren't wide enough for you to put that wide of something in there. And so when you do force it down in there, because if it don't fit, force it, you know, that's the way it's supposed to work, right? So when you force it down in there and then the toaster tries to pop and it goes tick, 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 and then all of a sudden your smoke detectors are going, me and you're getting your your broom out and you're fanning the smoke away and then you can you tell I've done this a time or two <laughs> oh I don't know why toasters are like that but somebody is just crazy enough to do that uh riddle me this Batman if one in five people from suffer from diarrhea does that mean that one enjoys it why only one? Maybe it's the other four that enjoy it. I don't think I must be the one that, no, wait, just don't, just, no. Constipation of the brain, diarrhea of the mouth. That one I will volunteer for because I do have that from time to time. Uh, and the next question is how important does a person have to be to be consider considering him assassinated instead of murdered? I'm thinking that's a word game. That is a word game. Because, you know, it's kind of sort of along the same lines as he was murdered in a hate crime. Okay. Now, I'm thinking if someone is mad enough to take your life whether that be mad as in mad or mad as in angry. Either way, I'm thinking there's some very intense dislike, a.k.a. hatred going on, and therefore hate crime. So, uh, if so, I, every person that's murdered is assassinated, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. And where did that word assass that's it's ass ass it's ass ass i nated ass ass hmm. moving along uh next one so if there's a misspelling of a word in a dictionary how would you know now that is one that there are times when I look in the dictionary or look at the online dictionary and, uh, oh, Grim, excuse me, Grimmy says it glue only sticks to the inside of the spout, which that one, yes, it does, or to your, it sticks to your fingertips. Remember doing that shit? You do a really thin layer on your fingertips and then you, you peel it off after it dries and you've got your fingerprint. <laughs> we were all budding CSI agents way back in kindergarten and first grade and all that fun shit. Um, and, oh, and your your toaster has a wise... See, I have a toaster oven now. It's ever so much easier. <laughs> Not necessarily a lot easier to clean, but it is a lot easier. And I can, I can toaster oven my pizza instead of having to put it in the microwave. So there you go. Um, oh, wow, and a bagel button. Wow, you have a newfangled fancy schmancy one because I don't, wow. That's cool, Graham. Hmm, okay, getting back to this. You know, there are times when I see words in the dictionary and I look at them and I think, that's not the way it's spelled. That just doesn't look right. That, if you sound it out, that just, no, because I'm a phonetic speller. I spell everything phonetically. And sometimes my phonetics are kind of phonetic up. Just say, I bet you thought I was going to drop an F-bomb, didn't you? <laughs> Fooled you. There's an effer for you. Okay. 
If a person owns a piece of land, do they own it all the way down to the center of the earth? Well, that kind of sort of depends. I think that's where they bring in the whole mineral rights thing, which I think is just absolutely odd. That is such a strange concept. Okay, number one, you can own a piece of dirt. That is a rather strange concept when you really think about it. And then, you know, if, if you own a certain section of property, does just the opposite of this. If you own that property, does that mean that all, you also own the airspace above? Because if you do, then, then you have little invisible walls that are little demarcations of, okay, you know, people fly over or they, or whatever. And, and, you know, like a bird's coming along and it doesn't have permission to come in your yard because the last time it came in your yard, it pooped on your head. And so you put up this and it flies and it goes right into that force field. It could happen. Never know. <laughs> I don't know though. I wonder, does it go all the way to the center of the earth? And if it does go all the way to the center of the earth, does it get narrower and narrower and narrower until it gets down there? Because, you know, the earth is supposed to be this like globular, globular kind of thing, you know, ovoid, whatever. Oh, it's a void. Hey, hey, there's a new theory we can kick around. Let's really get people going. The earth is a void. Because it's absolutely, there is a total absence of intelligence <laughs> in some parts of it. And it's spreading. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's like a vacuum. You hear that sucking sound? Yeah. Okay. If Wiley Coyote had enough money to buy all that Acme stuff, why didn't he just buy dinner? Because there is just nothing like bird on a hoof. It's not a hoof, though, is it? How about this one? A chameleon can match his skin color to any surface. But what if we put him on a mirror? Mm. Or how about this? Which one is faster, light, light or darkness? I can honestly say I never, ever, ever pondered that. But, hmm, I don't... I'm trying to think. A growing shadow only moves as quickly as the sun goes down. Hmm. Maybe they're the same. Maybe it's a tie. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. And here we go. Here's another one. If you want to fail, will you succeed? Now, see, that brings to mind the Confucius saying... Uh, the man who says he can and the man who says he can't are both right. Think about that one, Batman. How about this? Do fish get thirsty? I hadn't actually thought about that one, although I do recall uh, reading a Far Side cartoon where one of the fish was hollering at the mama fish in the fish bowl and saying, Mom, Theron dried the bed. Wow, that would be embarrassing, don't you think? I think so. You know, I know a lot of people that won't drink the water because, well, fish poop and pee in there. Besides the other things that they, they do, the, they do the nasty in there too. Yeah. Uh, do penguins have knees? Act I do actually know the answer to that. Yes, they do because D. Cheat would bless his heart. He shared an anatomically whatever x-ray kind of thing. Um, hi, Chloe. How you doing, sweetheart? And you pass on the dupe? Woo! Okay. Let's see. Just a minute. I want to see what's going on here. Huh? Suspected thief lassoed. Oh, hey, cool. Okay. <clears throat> In any case, D. Cheatwood shared a little picture to me of an x-ray, and it, and it pointed out the penguin's knees. So, yes, penguins do have knees. They're just covered by their britches. Apparently, penguins were the first ones to uh, make it stylish to be wearing baggy britches where the crotch is down around your ankles. See? Fashion trend. There you go. Penguins are trendsetters. That's all there is to it. Okay. Um, 
Let's see, what's the next one? So, why do they call it a black box when it's not black? Also, seeing as how the black box is indestructible, why don't they build planes out of the same material that they build the black box out of? That's not a black box. Because then the plane would be indestructible as well. See? Riddle me that, Batman. Um, let's see, what's the next one? What does a question without, or, no, nah, okay, you guys need to do that right. What is a question without an answer called? Um, I don't know. Huh. What is a question without an answer called? Is that called a conundrum? <laughs> and what is a conundrum? Hmm. Riddle me this, Batman. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share this over on Fakey Book. Just real quick like. Oh. By the way, in Booneyville, come on. Why are you not wanting to do that fake book? There. Um, where I work. We, uh, they're having a car show this weekend, and everybody was giving me crap because I didn't bring my old car in. Well, number one, I didn't feel like it. Uh, number two, I don't do car shows all that well. Um, just because I just, yeah. It's like, really, I'm not going to mess with that crap. And, uh, let's see. They've got, uh, pulled pork going on over there. They got a street dance going on over there. They got all kinds of other fun shit going on over there. And I'm thinking, no, no, just not going to play. Number one, because cops will be out in full force. Number two, we got uh, silage cutting going on out here, which is one of those things that, ugh. Harvest, I don't mind. Yeah, you can learn to deal with all of the extra truck traffic and all that other fun shit. But when they're cutting silage, because they don't put a cover over the top of the silage trucks. And silage, by the way, is when they're cutting, like if the wheat um, has been deemed um, a loss, whether due to drought or hail or what have you. But if, 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 the far, if it's been deemed a loss, then the farmer a lot of times will cut it for silage, which is feed. But they don't cover those damn trucks. So when they come driving down the road, have your windows up because that stuff spills out all over God's green earth and the asphalt and your car and your windshield and yeah, yippee-i-yay cow patty. And so, yeah, so I just kind of, I don't, I'm not real keen on silage time of year, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <sighs> Hi, Oliver. How you doing, sweetheart? I hope you're doing absolutely splendiferous. Okay, I don't know where in the hell I was going with any of this shit. Other than... Let me see here. Oh! <laughs> yes, that is fun. That is fun. There, um, That was the song I was actually going to look for, too, and I totally spazzed it off. Oh, well. Oh. Damn, looks like somebody in, ooh, looks like, um, North Fork Highway on Thursday, there was an accident that involved three motorcycles and a truck. Oh, that's not cool. Not cool at all. People, 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 it is that time of year again. So if you are out there on the road, Please keep an eye out for those on two wheels. Because trust me, they are keeping an eye out for you. And a lot of times they cannot react fast enough to keep you from running them over. And there are entirely too many people out there 
that do run bikers over. So please, please, please look again in your rear views before you turn. You know, and then also turn your head because that's why God made it to where it can pivot on your neck. Turn your head and make sure lots of bikers out there on the road. Please let them get to their destination safely. And that way you get to your destination safely as well. Okay. Let me see what all's going on. Okay, what was that? Define conundrum. Ah, thank you, Grim. Questions are questions, irrespective of whether they have an answer pro offered. Ah! Why, thank you ever so much, RLM 31914. And welcome aboard, darling. Okay. Um, do I see anything else? Nope. Nope. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Java Doctor shared this over in, on that effing site just a little bit ago. Here, let me get let me get a sip. Mmm. Little bit of my orange oil water. Mm. Just a couple of drops. Okay. Man ticketed after handing change to a cop posing as a panhandler. Now, are y'all ready? Because here it comes. That's fucked up. There's my F-bomb. That, and that truly is. A man who received a $175 traffic ticket for unbuckling his seatbelt to give change to what turned out to be a police officer posing as a panhandler is likely to think twice before giving to the less fortunate again. Which, see, this is all, I'm thinking this is all part of the plan. Number one, they can go bada bing, bada boom and nail you for some kind of supposed infraction, which is basically just a cha-ching moment for them little control freakish there and i'm wondering how far he stood away from the gentleman so that the gentleman had to unbuckle his seat belt in order to give him change and it also gets you to where you aren't helping out those in need although i will also put out there that i happen to personally know some people that are professional panhandlers and they make more money on average in a day than I do in a week. Which is somewhat infuriating. But hey, how, uh, how do you know if they're real or not? That's the question. That's the question. Apparently, Dane Rusk was driving away from a mall in Regina... Is that Regina or Regina? <laughs> I never know. This was on Wednesday when he spotted what he thought was a panhandler on the side of the road. As I came up to the stop sign, I stopped and looked, and I saw this homeless guy holding a sign. I instantly felt sorry for him, which, yeah, you know, I've, I've done that. That's when Rusk said he took off his seatbelt and grabbed $3 from his pocket. I reached out, I had to undo my seatbelt, hang over, and drop the change on the curb. Moments after dropping the change, Rusk was pulled over by police and issued a ticket. Oh, hey Grim, that's a hell of an idea. A slingshot. <laughs> Catch! Dunk! <laughs> oh... You know, most of the ones that I've been around, they will come up to the car and take the money from you. But, I don't know. The guy was trying to do something nice and assholes did this shit to him. I'm, I'm thinking this is like a major assholio kind of thing. And that's where I would need to be a hemorrhoid to irritate that assholio. Um... It goes on to say, I said, what do you mean I didn't talk to any police officer? And he said, well, yeah, you gave him money. 
Aha! So the person Rusk handed change to was an undercover cop. And Rusk received a fine for not wearing a seatbelt. Which a lot of states have now made that a moving violation. And if you get three moving violations in a certain period of time, then you have to go to driving school and your insurance goes up. It's a freaking racket is what it is. And we need to raise a ruckus on this shit. Just saying. <sighs> it's a messed up system. It truly is. Rusk said that he was pretty shocked by the incident. The ticket's $175 and the $3 I gave to him. I'm out $178, all because I was trying to help out a homeless guy. But the police say that this is nothing new. It's part of a project that has police watching for traffic violations at intersections, which I'm thinking y'all are number one and you're getting both hands at you right now. Intersections are probably the most critical areas when it comes to accidents, obviously. And our high-volume intersections are ones that we tend to target. Note, target. This was said by Inspector Evan Bray. Bray, as in the sound a donkey or a jackass makes. So, we will run random intersection projects throughout the city. It's a project, like a class project, like a science project, only this is a government money-making project. That's what it is. The police officer's sign was not soliciting money. Panhandling is not considered a crime. However, the city does have a bylaw that prohibits soliciting to vehicle occupants in high traffic areas. What do you deem a low traffic area? What do you deem? These are subjective things here, people. Apparently, that's the reason Dale Lakeman, who no longer holds up a cardboard sign on the streets of Regina, instead he collects bottles to support himself, um, cancel that seatbelt ticket to that gentleman because the poor guy took pity on a homeless person to give him some money. Lakeman said he hopes I don't. it won't deter others from giving to homeless, which I hope so as well, but I'm thinking that's probably an ulterior motive. Frickin' asshole. Rascal. Sweetheart, I love you, but stop that. Yes. Hi, Grammy. Hi. Uh, do I hang with hobos? You never know. I might. Okay. Uh, let me see. I will call you darling if I want to. <laughs> and yes, I am a creeper as well. So there. Um, okay. Go ahead and share this. Share the. That too. Share this link. There. I spit it out. I think I know which brother that is too. Um. Yeah, that would be a rather ignorant hobo to panhandle where no one goes or where there is yeah, a low traffic area. But, hey, it's pretty, 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 pretty chicken shit as far as I'm concerned. If I ever have to run for my life, I can assure you it's not going to end well. That is true, Marlene. That is true. If I have to run for my life, no. Ain't going to happen because I will make it I on a good day. I might make it a whole half a block. And then I'll just stop and turn around and say, okay, just do it. Just get it over with. Because seriously, besides the fact that why do people run when someone pulls a gun on them? Because you, <laughs> you are not Superman. Only Superman is faster than a speeding bullet. Okay. And that whole bob and weave dodge thing. That just makes you a little bit more difficult and it pisses them off, okay? So, just putting that out there. <laughs> I, I know, rascal. 
Okay. Let's see. Yes. Ow, 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 wow. Let's see. Oh, the one that, yeah. No, you made a cool name. You're RLM 31914. Yeah, that is kind of entrapment, too, Java Doctor. And I wonder if maybe the guy were to fight that, if he would get out of it. Although, I don't know, the way the judges are anymore. And, you know, this whole crappy thing of judges being elected. What the hell? What the hell? I mean, you get some moron in there, but, you know, then again, I go, <laughs> why, are, why are we electing anybody? And, and then, in the next breath, I say, guess what? I'm running for county commissioner. <laughs> um, yeah, Java, that is an all-time low. As far as I'm concerned, yes, it is. That's that's just pretty scuzzy. Okay. Um, okay, Grimmy shared this one. I'm going to close out. Um, suspect lassoed in parking lot. So, did... It was Cowboy that did it. Cowboy, you are the man. Not only are you... Yeah. Dude. Not only are you the computer man, but... Damn. There you go. <clears throat> Apparently a suspected thief. It's just suspected. Even though he's caught red-handed, he was suspected. Because, well, don't you know? Innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> That only works when they say it does. Just putting that out there as well. Never mess with a cowboy. One suspected bike thief learned this the hard way. This is on uh, CNN.com, by the way. Um, and this didn't take place in Texas either, but rather in Oregon. Because that's where a cowboy is. Don't you know? On Friday morning, a damsel found herself in distress, and a man perched on his horse came galloping to her rescue. And you know what? It's even a mostly white horse, or blonde, at least. Uh, I don't know what the proper terminology is for the that color of horse. It's pretty. It's a pretty horse. Uh, this would seem like a scene out of a Western movie, except the incident happened in the parking lot of an Eagle Point shopping center. You know, those damn malls, they're just a den of inequity. You know, all kinds of criminals all over the place. Um, apparently, Robert Borba, armed with just a rope, put his lassoing skills to use when he heard someone cry out for help. A lady yelled out, He's stealing my bike! And so he jumped on his horse that was saddled up in his trailer, and when the suspected thief saw Borba was on his trail, he jumped off the bike and started running. Note, a suspected thief, even though he was on it, it was not his bike, but he was on it and trying to ride somewhere away from where he found it. Found, I found it. Can I keep it? But he's only suspected. I never did really figure that shit out. How can you just be a suspected or an alleged when you're caught red-handed? That that just don't... Kind of like that little prickly head rapist that only got six months. Alleged. Really? He was caught by two people. <gasps> oh, well. Get back with this. Because that other one will really piss me off. Uh, when the suspect saw Borba was on his trail, he jumped off the bike and started running, according to the Eagle Point police. Borba was able to successfully rope the man by the ankles. This is a photo, and there is a photo taken by a bystander that showed the rope man on the ground holding onto a tree. Ah, so apparently he was making sure that this guy wasn't getting away, so he was keeping that rather taut. Ha 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 ha. Let's see. Oh. Okay. Borba apparently is a professional cowboy. 
and was on his way to California when he stopped in the shopping center to pick up some dog food, not for the horse, for his dog. The suspect was kept tied up until police arrived. It was truly the wild, wild west, said a spokesperson for the Eagle Point Police. Potential charges were not available, and they're not saying if they're going to press charges against Mr. Borba because obviously he was holding the man against his will, and so, you know, that's breaking the law too, ain't it? You should not have gotten involved, sir. You should have waited for the police to get there. How many times do you hear that bullshit? Uh, entirely too many times. You know, don't take matters into your old ha own hands. This isn't the Old West. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, it is. That's out west. Oops. And I did my cap locks. I hate when that happens. I went all cap lock. And I wasn't really meaning to. Okay, where was I at? <clears throat> I'm going to go look in my pocket real fast, or maybe not real fast. Um, <laughs> okay, Grimmy, seeing as how it's a freak of Friday, I'm going to try and get to this one that, that you shared the other day. And seeing as how it's in my pocket, I'm not going to open the actual link. I'm just going to open it in my pocket so I don't have the other doodad that comes along with that frickin' website. Because, yeah, dailymail.co.uk, y'all have entirely too much shit on the side. Okay? And I don't know what it is with you. I have pop-up blocker. I have ad blocker. I have all this other fun stuff. But for some stupid reason, you still make things go hinky. And it's just Daily Mail, and there's like one other website that does that crap to me. But... In any case, Grimmy shared this on Ethan the other day and tagged me in it. Um, Chinese girls pictured on a busy train with condoms on their faces. So, is it a bizarre new beauty trend or just a cheap stunt? I'm thinking it's Chinese girls. <laughs> Do you really need to ask more? I'm also thinking... Holy fuck is the one that talked him into doing it. And that's P-H-U-Q is how that's spelled, just so, so you know. Is it some kind of bizarre beauty trend or just a cheap promotional stunt? Pictures have emerged of a group of girls riding the subway during peak uh, hour traffic in Beijing, China, wearing condoms on their faces. Mm, okay, I just, I gotta say it. Uh, fuck face? Hmm? It is not known why they're wearing the contraceptive on their faces, but the images, which were uploaded to Facebook, have caused quite a stir with people calling it a joke and immoral. I'm thinking it's just moronic, but that's just my thoughts. Wow, I'm hoping... Okay, scrolling through these pictures, they don't look like they've been used. Oh, Lord. And some of these people are... Wow. The girls in the images are wearing skimpy outfits and can be seen wearing the pink plastic contraceptive across their face, arm, and chest. It's a real joke why they wear condoms on their faces instead of their genitals, one Facebook user posted. Another said China changes a lot, and in the past, their parents would have disowned these girls. Do we know that these are girls? Inquiring minds. Someone else added, my question is, um, were they passing a kind of message? Because normally, if you put up a show like that, it's got to have significance. Maybe they were advertising. Maybe they were saying, you don't have to worry about bringing your own because look here, I've got some. Ew. Ew. Um, Grimmy, 
have you figured out this is an inquiring minds time kind of thing? Have you figured out why these girls are doing this? Because I personally think it's just absolutely crazy. And yes, Cowboy is amazing. I'm going to scroll because, yep. Um, I'd scrolled up and there's Cowboy and Vinny Late. Hi, Vinny Late. Guess what? Vin is going to be on directly following me. He will be the middle of a crazy sandwich. He will be the Vin, the Vin, the creamy Vinny middle. I don't want to know about the rest of it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, because you get a rocket chair and balls to the wall. Hey, Vin, what part of the furniture are you going to be? <laughs> Just curious. Because Grim and I are, are bookends. It's the two G's. You're between the two. two. Hey, it, he Vin's in the middle of the G spots. Oh, that's just wrong. <laughs> Be back in a few, huh? Ha. Huh. No, I'm not saying shut up and be a good victim. Where did I say that? Hmm. Okay. Moving along. Let me see what's going on over here. Hi, Weta. How you doing, lady? I hope you're not nearly as warm in misery as it is out here in northwest Booneyville, Kansas, because, wow... You guys have the humidity, and you add these temperatures to the humidity, and wow. No, it's definitely not a fashion statement, unless they are advertising grim. Maybe, just maybe, they're, maybe they are saying, uh, Looky, me love you long time. See, me have protection right here. But... Do you know where that face has been? Do you really want to put that condom on? Yeah. Uh-oh. That's not cool, trust no one. Are you feeling any, any better? I hope. I hope, I hope. Okay, back to my pocket I go. And then I'm going to go to Oopy. And then I'm probably going to go to... um. Let me see. Plantain. Uh, I'm just scrolling here real quick just to kind of see what all kinds of stuff I have in my pocket that I need to just <sighs> clean out. Lots. I have lots in my pocket that I need to just clean out. Okay, um, here's another one that I saw earlier today. How one California community or county beat the surveillance state through an ordinance, which an ordinance is not a law. It's just a voted on by the council rule, which rules, laws, Legally, there is a very distinct difference between the two, but six of one, half a dozen of the other. Oh, well. Police using public eye surveillance software, which claims to leverage mobile technology and social media for public safety. On Wednesday... The Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors unanimously passed a surveillance technology ordinance that sets the stage to limit the acquisition and use of spy gear by law enforcement and other county agencies. It also highlights a strategy that can be used to take on federal surveillance programs. Under, this is, by the way, this is on mintpressnews.com. Under the new ordinance, local law enforcement agencies in the county must get board approval prior to purchasing new surveillance technology 
or implementing existing technology in new ways. It also requires any agency using such technology to inventory, standardize, and publicly disclose their digital data collection systems and to establish and enforce safeguards governing data retention and access. Hmm. Now, saying that, that this is going to be curbing really is, is kind of a... Because if they're anything like the city council where I used to live, all they are is a rubber stamper. Anything the city administrator brings up, they go... All those in favor? Opposed? So, yeah, it's a rubber stamp board is basically what it is. So I don't know that this is necessarily going to be, maybe they're better, I don't know. But yeah, from personal experience of late, rubber stamp. Restore the Fourth initiated the effort to get the ordinance passed with three primary goals in mind. Require public debate and usage regulation before the equipment is deployed. Require annual reporting of how the surveillance technologies are being used. And require criminal penalties if these regulations are intentionally avoided. Now, you're just going to make them even sneakier. You know that, don't you? According to the National Board Secretary and Chair of the RT4, um, San Francisco Bay Area, Zaki Mannion, the Santa Clara County Ordinance accomplishes all three goals. Passage of the county law sta uh, sets the stage to drastically limit the use of surveillance technology in the county and to keep the data law enforcement does collect from being widely shared which could also be a hindrance to law enforcement or to cases going before a judge and jury <coughs> as we've seen in some cases of late where the uh, defense attorney or defense counsel whomever however you wish to put that finally got access to dash cam video or body video body cam video or whatever that exonerates their client and incriminates the police officer. So this is this is one of those things that I'm seeing an awful lot of sticky wickets in this. We think that the passage of this law will introduce a firewall against the secret adoption of current and future surveillance technologies like mass <clears throat> excuse me, mass biometric collection. Our next steps are to pass similar ordinances in communities across the country. The process has already started in Palo Alto, Oakland, Santa Cruz, and Alameda. Today's unanimous vote will massively accelerate the process. Passage of this ordinance was the result of cooperation between several grassroots groups along with Restore the Fourth, including ACLU, Northern California's, um, and the Oakland Privacy Working Group. Manain, or, or Manayan, however you say that, said other localities can use the success in Santa Clara as a model. We, uh, we're encouraged by Santa Clara County's vote for transparency and community involvement in decisions around surveillance and civil liberties. We hope that Santa Clara's surveillance technology ordinance may also serve as a model for nationwide, locally driven surveillance reform efforts which aim to strengthen privacy protections and improve policing practices. Oh, this is scary. I, I, I see this can be a good thing, but I also see it can be a very, very bad thing. Ordinance like this one, passed in Santa Clara, also undermine the federal surveillance state. The federal government funds much of the surveillance technology acquired by state and local law enforcement. And in return, 
in return, because, you know, ain't nothing in this life free. <clears throat> Federal agencies tap into the data uh, swept up by these agencies through information sharing agreements and fusion centers. You know, it's kind of like that project that they were doing with the guy with the sign on the busy street corner. Information gathered by your local police department often ends up permanently stored in federal databases. And these create a, the backbone of the federal surveillance state, which, yeah, they are watching you. Somebody is always watching you. That's just a fact of life, especially anymore. Although I think back to the days when I was quite young and Bewitched was on and Gladys Kravitz was always peeking out through the window blinds. So, you know, there's always been that one busybody. Everybody knows at least one busybody that's watching you like a hawk. And they're watching everybody else as well. And that person, usually when they would watch you and they didn't get all of the facts, so they would just kind of fill in the blanks. Yeah, rumor mongers is another word for them. Um, Menion, or however you say that, described the local ordinance as part of a wider strategy to take on federal spying. Federal, as in a bunch load of Gladys Kravitzes. Our idea was to block a strategy by which mass surveillance has been quietly creeping into our communities. The federal government had been quietly funding local police department purchases of powerful surveillance technologies that were deployed with great secrecy because if you know about it, then they won't work. Yeah, some of this shit happened when I was on city council. These included cell phone interception equipment and automatic license plate readers and our strategy for blocking these technologies was to encourage municipalities to start to regulate surveillance technologies in the broadest possible manner. Now, I do recall when I was on city council, the police chief coming to us and saying that uh, when he was giving his report, which did that every two weeks, whenever we had a city council meeting, the police chief was there and he gave a report. And in one of his reports, he was talking about how he was going to apply for a federal grant for this new vehicle or for this new body armor or for another police officer. And whenever he would say, and I know I was being a mouthy, nosy bitch, but you know what? That was part of my job. That's why I got elected to that position was because people knew I was mouthy and nosy. And I would ask every time he was applying for a grant, so how long is this grant good for? How much money are you getting? How much money is the city going to have to kick in on this? And when this grant expires, are we going to be stuck holding the bag? And on every one of those, the city was always on the hook for half of the expense. Oh, but it was on sale for half price. Yeah, they mark it up three times, and then they cut it in half. So they're still making a profit. Why? Because they're selling in bulk to the federal government. And so they have a contract, kind of like government hammers that are like $25 a piece or whatever kind of, well, $25 ain't bad now for a hammer. Years ago, 50, so let's say 50 bucks a hammer. You know, you hear these stories about the $250 toilet seat, the, the $100 light bulb, the $50 hammers. And I do know how this shit works because I worked for government city-wise, city level, and I was also on city council. And when you do a, you do a contract with a supplier, they make you, in, when you enter into that, in order to get the discount <laughs> that they offer you, you have to have a minimum order every time you order. And so, you know, if someone's too freaking lazy to go look in the storage closet and see, oh, hey, we've got 10 cases of toilet seats or 10 cases of light bulbs or two cases of hammers and we only really needed one, 
but they go i need a hammer and it was right here but someone must have taken it and i'm too freaking lazy to go to the storage closet and look for another one in a box marked hammer so i'm just going to order an one more hammer because i only need one hammer and you know what the company providing that hammer to you they don't care that all you order is one hammer or one light bulb or one toilet seat they don't care you know why because you have a contract with them you have a minimum monetary amount order so if that minimum order is a hundred dollars you just paid a hundred bucks for a hammer by the way that's also including shipping and handling no tax because it can't tax a government entity but does include shipping and handling that's how you get your hundred dollar hammers or your hundred dollar light bulbs or your hundred dollar toilet seats that's how that shit works so start getting on your local communities and saying uh, excuse me before you purchase anything new why don't you go look in the storage closet see if you've got something back there already that's probably getting all awful, awful dusty just because it's dusty don't mean it don't work so I know double negative okay back to this the passage of an ordinance in one locality may not seem significant but actually it is because it sets a precedent when mul when that's multiplied over hundreds of cities and counties across the United States this strategy could seriously undermine federal surveillance programs if local police can't collect and share the data it cannot end up in federal database databases not overtly secretively it can because seriously just because you tell them no doesn't mean they're gonna stop don't you know you know it's kind of like a kid when you tell them no and they keep reaching for that cookie jar how many times does a child still reach in and grab a cookie out of that jar and you have to go over and swat their hand how many times at least half of the time <laughs> now look at the government same way because that's pretty much the way it works. <sighs> it is somewhat infuriating. It's wonderful that they're stepping up and doing this. It's absolutely awesome because that's the way it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be home rule. The bulk of the power and control and decision making for any individual is in their home. So long as no one is getting harmed they hold the bulk of the decision and power making or the power and decision making yeah turn that around um, <clears throat> and then it moves out to the neighborhood and to the township and to the city and to the county and then to the region and then to the state and then by the time that ripple gets out there when it that ripple finally reaches the federal government you barely even notice it because there is almost no power left in it that's the way it's supposed to work that's the way we're supposed to be doing things unfortunately we have been fooled into believing that's not the way it's supposed to be ah let's see up oh, Breda Choey's out of here later Choey have an awesome weekend <laughs> okay I gotta get caught up here um <laughs> reading 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 um uh, yeah trust no one chicken can sometimes be a little bit on that yeah <laughs> that's a good one my brother said even bacteria won't eat walmart chicken which uh, maybe it will. You never know. 
Okay, uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Checking, chatters going. Okay, what's that? What, what, what? Super Victor. Ew! That's just wrong. Shares a name with a sex toy. Ew, ew, ew. Okay. He's in, he's out. He's in, he's out. Okay, now that I'm done catching up with what's going on in the chat, which y'all have been just chatting amongst yourself, that's a good thing. You need to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put this over on Fakie Book as well. Just because, bravo, but yeah. Don't mind me while I sit over here and not hold my breath, okay? I've gotten a wee bit jaded when it comes to the way governments work anymore. <sighs> Tentative. That all pretty much, you know, it's kind of like uh, when you vote someone in hoping that they are not a tyrant and then they turn into a tyrant and so the next time around you go, I'm going to vote this other guy in because these guys are tyrants and I want this guy I, I believe will not be a tyrant and then they turn out to be a tyrant as well. I think it's something to do with being in there for a while or being around those that have been in there for a while and learning the ropes and <laughs> yeah. Well, we have forgotten that when they take enough rope to hang themselves, you're supposed to jerk that sucker tight. Hmm. Yes, sweeter. Okay. I'm going to go see what's going on in... What did I do with my... Oh, that's probably what I did with my effin'. <laughs> there it is. Take a deep breath. Okay. <sighs> Thanks, Finn. So why was I supposed to do that? Other than get a, a rush from doing that. Did you blow smoke in my direction? Don't be blowing smoke. <laughs> So what you going to be covering tonight then, so I can tell everybody, because it's going to be protocols and punctuation, and wow, honey, <laughs> I have a tendency to have problems with both of those, just saying, it's p -p 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 protocol and punctuation, mm -hmm. alrighty, I will be listening in, hun. Oh, hi, Bobby. Yeah, I am sure it was extremely hot on that roof today. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't on a roof, and you were a Bobby on a hot roof. Wow. I was in an air-conditioned building, and I was still... Every time I stepped outside, it was like, Oh, Lordy, I really shouldn't have done that. Oh. Beautiful Catherine. My dear friend Catherine is sharing her honey. Oh, goodness. Okay. Now, let me get back to... I'm going to open Oopie. Oopie, 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 Oopie. Or maybe I'll go to FARC. Haven't been to FARC for a while, have I? FARC just really... You know, I, I check it out and it's like, nah. I'm not real impressed. I don't want to find out how to FARC. That just sounds sick and wrong. That's across the top of FARC. New to FARC? Find out how to FARC. No, ooh, that's just wrong. What? Okay, under FARC's face palm. While warning against voter fraud, California sheriff's deputies commit voter intimidation. Oh, here we go. This is going to be a good one. This is from TalkingPointsMemo.com. 
California, you guys are just, you're all over the place. You're all over the map with this shit. What the hell? A voter fraud probe in California turns into a voter intimidation boondoggle. Ah! Uh. Having police come to your home wielding weapons and asking questions about your voter registration status just days before an election sends a clear signal. That signal wasn't lost on residents in the Hmong communities in rural Northern California. This is where the state police came to their doors doing just that earlier this month. They said authorities also set up a roadway checkpoint to target these drivers, threatening to arrest and prosecute them if they voted illegally. Following those allegations of flagrant voter intimidation in the lead up of Tuesday's state primary, the sheriff of Siskiyou County, where just about 43,000 people reside, told TPM his deputies played only a minor role in a state-led gumshoe probe into potential voter registration fraud. Sheriff John Lopey, <laughs> Lopey, said deputies accompanied investigators to provide security in an area he described as potentially dangerous and inundated with what he estimated to be 2,000 illegal marijuana grow sites. Okay, so since it's inundated with what is estimated, what, does marijuana vote now? I'm, I'm trying to figure out how in the hell 2,000 illegal marijuana grow sites uh, connects to voter intimidation and voter fraud. I'm, I'm not making that connection. Obviously, my mind just doesn't work that way. Apparently, the accounts of voter intimidation were serious enough that investigators from the Secretary of State's office, joined by staffers from the State Attorney General's office, were dispatched on June 7th to monitor polling places across Siskiyou County. What began as an investigation of alleged voter fraud quickly evolved into an investigation of potential voter intimidation, a spokesman said in a statement emailed to TPM. Ironically, the Secretary of State's office was being forced to look into acts of alleged voter intimidation performed in service of its very own probe. Oh, that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Wow, we're going to have to investigate ourselves to see if we were intimidating people that we were intimidating. Ooh, this could be a bit of a sticky wicket, don't you know? While Lopi declined to identify the state agency involved in the initial voter fraud probe, telling TPM that they asked us to not even mention their name. Be very, very quiet. We're looking for frauds. They're not real rascally rabbits. They're frauds. Yeah, and the state Secretary of State's office confirmed its investigators were on the ground after initial questions were raised by the county register. Huh. We're going to come around and we're going to strong arm some people and we're going to scare the bejeebers clean out of them. But don't you tell nobody that we're here because we're investigating. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. A spokesman for the Secretary of State's office acknowledged that on a rare occasions, local law enforcement, now you notice law enforcement, as opposed to, they used to be peace officers way back in the day. And then it changed to police officer. And they, they were a little bit more, you know, studlier and being pushier and bossier. And now that they're law enforcement officers, they're like, you, you look at me wrong, I tase your ass. 
Have you ever noticed? Have you noticed that? That lovely little progression where you went from having Andy Griffith and Barney Fife as your little peace officers to now you've got Rambo on steroids driving around in a cop car and handing out tickets to people that give money to homeless people or people that they think are homeless. Assholes. Okay, get back to this. Um, yeah, rare occasions. Okay, local law enforcement will accompany state investigators who are by law prohibited from carrying weapons for security reasons. Why are state investigators prohibited from carrying weapons for security reasons? Is it because they cannot be trusted with the gun? Are they Barney Fives and they cannot have the bullet in the gun and Andy carries the bullet around in a pocket, his pocket? So when he deems it necessary for Barney to have that bullet, he can give it to him? Is that why they're not allowed to carry weapons for security reasons? The spokesman also fired back at the sheriffs for overzealousness, which he said was construed as efforts to intimidate voters. Huh. Overzealous. I'm thinking that's where the steroids kick in. It is the general policy of the Secretary of State to decline commenting on any investigation and further advised the sheriff of that policy and that any sort of comment by anyone would be inappropriate and could compromise the integrity. <laughs> wow, integrity. You guys, really? Oh, the integrity of our efforts. Well, you know, seeing as how you have very little integrity, I don't think it's going to compromise it much. That was said by spokesman Sam Mahood. The local sheriff and the district attorney instead chose to repeatedly issue statements that were viewed as efforts to intimidate the Hmong community. Rick Hansen, an election law expert at the University of California, Irvine, told TPM it was uncommon to see state and local authorities use resources in that way to investigate potential voter fraud, particularly so close to an election. I'm thinking, have badge, will bully. You can't tell me I can't talk. I have a badge. And ain't nobody keeping the bullets away from me, neither. Huh. This is apparently pretty unusual behavior for this day and age, even given the acrimony that surrounds our elections these days. Also, the residents who were terrified of going to vote after the investigation, Lori Schellenberger, voting rights director for ACL, ACLU California, said in an interview with TPM, there was really widespread fear, she said, and it was creating an increasing atmosphere of intimidation in that community, which I'm thinking, California, wow, you have a, a tried and true history of that. Because really, if you look back at unions, the unions in California, the main reason that they were started was because they didn't want the Chinamen getting jobs and so they started unions so that and they wouldn't let the Chinese that were migrating over join the unions uh yeah look it up look it up but I don't don't do just a Google search by the way because Google is yeah there's lots of other search engines use multiple that's a whole other story but um let's see Shellberger contacted, or Schellenberger contacted the Secretary of State and Attorney General's office after she said it became increasingly clear to me that this was potentially a targeted campaign against an ethnic minority. Ha! Huh. Imagine that. A press release from the Sheriff's office dated June the 3rd confirmed a series of voter fraud investigations where just investigating fraud 
Do you investigate fraud prior to the fraud being committed? Are you guys being the thought police? I always thought, you know, when you invest a crime, the crime has to actually be committed first in order for you to investigate it. That's kind of what I thought. You know, there had to be some kind of action, some kind of criminal action. Someone had to be harmed in some way in order for it to be a crime. Oh, I know. That's such a narrow definition of crime, isn't it? Apparently, these residents were terrified of going to vote. Um, a press release. Wait a minute. Did I already read that? No, I hadn't. A press release from the sheriff's office dated June 3rd confirmed a series of voter fraud investigations and on June 31st and June 1st and 2nd in three areas of the county. Hmm. Siskiyou County District Attorney Kirk Andres warned in the statement that possible voter fraud and abuse cases in the future would be very seriously pursued by his office. That's in the future. This one, well, we're just going to let it go away. But in the future, oh yeah, oh yeah. We're pleased the state took the voter fraud allegations seriously and intimidated their invest, or excuse me, not intimidated, initiated their investigative efforts. This was from the district attorney's office, um, but it did not respond, or excuse me, that's from Andrew, excuse me, the district attorney. But they did not respond this week to multiple requests for comment from TPM. So, huh. The sheriff, however, strenuously denied that his deputies engaged in a voter intimidation campaign. He also said that out of 200 questionable voter registration cases, officers visited just 39 sites, many of which he said were unoccupied. Uh-huh. He later told TPM that deputies actually made contact with less than 10 residents, which he said hardly constitutes some wide-scale effort to suppress the vote. He also slammed residents' account of law enforcement checkpoints as blatantly false and called allegations of intimidation an outrageous effort to demean and vilify law, law enforcement. Yeah, those enforcers. Mm -hmm. He also acknowledged that one of his officers did have a service rifle slung under his arm. But that's not supposed to be intimidating, even though when police officers see someone walking around with a squirt gun that looks even kind of sort of maybe possibly like a gun, they're intimidated enough to pull their weapon and fire. But hey, you shouldn't be intimidated by an officer carrying a rifle. Yeah, apparently that is prudent. He cited the uh, illegal grow sites as the reason for carrying the weapon and an uptick in people who were hostile and uncooperative with police and hundreds of resident complaints about people living in tents or without running water. Well, gee, that's happening across the country. They're called homeless people. And you know why? Because the banks are having a damn good time Forfeiting or forfeiture, forfeiture set or foreclosure. That's the word I want. It's it, one of them F words. Foreclosing on people. Wow. I saw a video about that yesterday where the, and it was in California or in Colorado, by the way. And uh, the gal and her children and her baby were all first thing in the morning. People with weapons and body armor bust in the door and escort them out of their house and then start talking all calm and gentle them and telling them you're not allowed back in the residence. Well, I want to see the court order. Oh, we have a court order, but we just can't produce it right now. But we have a court order, trust me. Really? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It's scary. It's scary what they're pulling off. People need to, instead of standing around and videotaping this shit with your freaking phones, why don't you all start getting together and kind of do a circle thing around the cops and going, what the hell's the deal here? Huh? What's the deal? 
That's what I'd like to know on a lot of this shit. Uh, let's see. Apparently, this sheriff, who has been open about his affiliation with Constitutional Sheriff's Movement, went on to accuse the ACLU and high-powered attorneys of targeting his small rural county to coerce and denigrate law enforcement. And yet, you're calling yourself law enforcers instead of peace officers, where you are keeping the peace. You are helping others to keep the peace. You are telling them to pull up their big boy BVDs and their big girl tidy whities and to work out your disagreements amongst yourself in a nonviolent manner. Hey. <clears throat> he goes on to say, as a sheriff, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to apologize for doing my job. I believe this is an irresponsible attack against public officials. There's that lovely word game again, and an effort by the ACLU and San Francisco attorneys to harass and demean and vilify us. Not that I'm saying the ACLU is the most wondrous group in the world, and high-powered attorneys, I have very little use for them as well. I have very little use for attorneys, period. I have very little use for all of these people, actually. <clears throat> While the U.S. Census shows just 1% of the county's population is Asian, uh, Lopi said that the demographics of the area have shifted dramatically in recent years. And he suggested immigrants may have been coerced into committing voter fraud by big bosses. Ah, with land interests in the area. Ah, okay. He believes that some of the Asian Americans were manipulated, perhaps cajoled or coerced into filling out voter registration cards. How many people are registered to vote multiple times across the country and nobody is investigating it? I want to know why you're investigating a crime that hasn't even been committed. Are you psychic? I have a problem with this whole shebang. Up next, WMW-RTE. Oh, what matters worldwide? Is that what that is? Hmm. Vin, Han, without doing the, the little, um, oh, you forgot why, you silly man. Honey, what does WMW-RTE stand for? Oh, off the cuff? Sweetie, sometimes when you're being extremely clever, you're too clever for this old broad. And I don't understand which is really not something that unusual. There's a lot of times I flat ass don't understand. <laughs> I am not one bit ashamed to admit that. Huh. I'm thinking that whole voter fraud thing as a he, should, he said, she said, let's get to the bottom of this goofy shit. I don't trust either side of that argument. Okay. Greenland witnessed its highest June temperature ever recorded on Thursday. Wow! Let's see this shit. What was it? 30 degrees? Oh, crap. It got up to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow! That is warm for Greenland. Global warming! We're all going to die! Eventually. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Bobby, for that. That's kind of cool. I'm going to share this one real quick. Oh, dang, and I'm almost out of time. Holy crap and only. Because, yeah, I've actually got someone following after me, so I have to actually pay attention to the time. <laughs> Oi. Let's see here. Let me find just the right little emoticon guy. Uh, this one. 
that's the guy I wanted. Wow, that's a long link, too. Okay, now I'm going to go check out what Bobby posted. Just because. I think that's kind of cool. Um... Greenland witnessed its highest June temperature ever recorded on Thursday. A 24 Celsius. Wow. Wow. Apparently, Nook, this is in Nook, uh, Greenland's capital, and it's on its southwest coast where the country's warmest weather typically occurs. Probably from that ocean flow because, you know, the... When it comes down the Pacific, like around Alaska and all that fun stuff, it's freaking frigid because it's already been underneath the North Pole and all that fun stuff. Uh, <laughs> you're so funny, Vin. Um, but when it, I can't remember what that's called, the, the Atlantic conveyor or something like that. Uh, but the, the warm water, warm ocean currents come up the Atlantic, which is why Britain is so temperate, I guess is one way of putting it. Because if you didn't have that warm Atlantic current coming up there, it would be frigid too. Just saying. The British Isles would be. So, yeah, on the southwest coast, okay, I could see that happening. Um, oh, Danish even. Circles. The Danish Meteorological Institute has confirmed on a preliminary basis, just preliminary basis, that the measurement would replace the previous record of 73.8 degrees, which was set in Kangerlussik, whatever, wherever that is, June 15, 2014. That temperature was also recorded in southwest Greenland, about 200 miles north of Nuuk. John Capellan, a senior climatologist at the DMI, told the, told the Post that the warm weather was brought by winds from the east that set up between high pressure over the northeast, or over northeast Greenland, and a low pressure south of Greenland. When winds come from the east over Nook, they blow downhill, which leads to an increase in temperature. This is the result of, what, adiabic, whatever. You guys in your fur and words. It's a result of warming, <laughs> where air is compressed from low pressure at the top of a mountain to high pressure at sea level. It's the same kind of dry warmth that occurs as a result of Santa Ana winds in Southern California. Ah, now me understand. Thursday's toasty reading marks the second exceptionally warm temperature recorded in southwest Greenland since April, when the ice melt season began about a month prematurely. Hmm. On April 11th, um, Kanger, yeah, yeah, that town, hit a record high of 64.4 degrees, or 17.8 Celsius, and this was the warmest April temperature on record at that location, and it nearly set an all-time warm temperature record for Greenland as a whole. At the time, so much ice was melting that scientists at the DMI couldn't believe what they were seeing. They had to check out our models, or they had to check out our models were working properly. That Somehow or another, that sentence doesn't work for me. This week, the Institute announced that Greenland's ablation, or ablation, okay, Greenland's ablation season, the period when its ice sheet loses more mass from melting along its edges than it does from snowfall in its interior, started on June the 6th. Okay. Um, okay, this is the sixth earliest onset of ice loss in our 27-year record. 27-year record? Okay. Although there isn't really any large difference from one year to the next, 
in the top ranking 17 years, said client scientist Peter Langan. And I'm wondering which side of the client debate Peter is on. Just saying. Greenland's exceptionally exceptional warmth in 2016 piles on the other record warm milestones established in recent years. In 2012, the temperature um, on the southern coast soared to 76.6 degrees in May. The next year, on July the 30th, the temperature in the observation sta uh, station on Greenland's southwest coast soared to 78.6 degrees, becoming Greenland's warmest July temperature and warmest of any month. Wow, if that's as warm as it gets, I'm going to quit complaining about having temperatures higher than like 78 degrees because I really don't want to have the frigid opposite that Greenland has. That's quite fascinating. Thank you, Bobby, for sharing that. Oh, off the cuff, talking shit. What matters worldwide? Okay, I've I kind of sort of figured that out. Oh, and rounding the edge. Thank you. <laughs> I was totally drawing a blank on that, Vince. Wow. Yeah. It's a Friday, and my brains are fried. And cowboy, if I have more than one stalker, it's probably a four-legged one. <laughs> Because my puppies and my kitty cats follow me everywhere. Um, okay. Let me see. <laughs> I'm going to put this over on Fakie Book as well. Just because I can actually share. Hey! And no, I don't want to move to Greenland. Because I didn't fall for that one. Yeah, it's called Greenland because it's so green. No, it's not. You guys, are, you guys are where the government got its idea to name it one thing to make people think it was pleasant and then do the exact opposite. I know better than that shit. Yeah. And I'm going to make a smart-ass post. I know you're shocked. Yes, Fins? Oh. You're welcome, sweetheart. <laughs> Although I don't know what I did, but you're welcome anyway, hon. Okay. Um, oh, 10 minutes. Okay, well, seeing as how I only have 10 minutes, I'm not going to really get into anything else because, yeah, I can burn 10 minutes and with talking about nothing. <laughs> Wait, I can burn two hours talking about nothing and giggling. So, hey, excuse me. Okay. Directly following me will be Vince, Mr. Vin Late Again, Vinese, Mr. V Vin E, Mr. The Vin of Many Voices. <laughs> He's going to be on with uh, What Matters Worldwide, Rounding the Edge. So, hey, should be a very interesting show. Are you going to be one hour or two, darling? Um inquiring minds time i suppose i should have asked that earlier um and following vince will be the balls to the wall i almost said freaker's ball but it will be balls to the wall with grimner this evening and possibly solomon is tonight the night solomon calls i hope so i'm anxiously awaiting solomon calling i love to listen to him because he he's always got so much info out there it's, it's like he's just bursting with it. Um, okay, let's see. So that I got Vince. I got Freaker's Ball. I got Grimmy's. Grimmy's only 83 degrees. Ah, oh, deal. Spacey's only 84. Let me see what I got. I, I show you what I got. I'll one-up you. <laughs> Watch me not. Okay. Um... Booyah! I am still the hot mama. <laughs> but it's coming in flashes. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So, Vince is directly following me. Yeah, he's a stalker. And then Grimner will be coming on after Vince with the balls to the wall. B 
Be sure to stick around this weekend, though, because tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock Eastern Time will be Salvanor with the Salvanor event. I'm not real sure what he's reading, but I'm sure it will be extremely interesting. And you'll get to listen to, um, that's what I was thinking, Grimmy, should be a Solomon night. Um, I feel like Solomon tonight. Uh, wow, that didn't sound nearly like it did in my head. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> okay, where was I? Oh, yeah. Solvenor, tomorrow. Be sure to check it out. That's on ucy.tv. Always excellent. Then, tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, will be Kira with the bridge. So check that out. Kira's always got something very intelligent going on. And then tomorrow evening, Bo Diddy and his bodacious tunage here on reallibertymedia.com channel 3 or RLM radio also on the uh, RLM tune in station and the RLM internet radio station I do believe and wait but wait there's no there's but, but, let's let's do that over again shall we <laughs> but wait there's more don't call yet because, wow, I am Friday. Um, Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner will be on with the blues. And he will be leading you into a bunch of crickets chirping. Although I still say the crickets are ever so quiet because when Hal Anthony speaks, even the crickets listen. Just saying. Hal is going to be on with Behind the Woodshed, and he's going to be taking you back behind the woodshed and opening up a can of whoop-ass and hopefully opening up into your brain and getting you to do some thinking for yourself and then following that thinking with a little bit of action because thinking does no good if you do not act upon it. And Hal will tell you just exactly how to act properly because Hal knows. Hal's a smart feller. He knows. Um... I, Grammy Mary, in my rocket chair, will be back next week, Wednesday, same Betty time, same Betty channel, with another edition, the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of Grammy's Rocket Chair. Uh, and you know what? I do. I haven't burned through that whole ten minutes. What the hell? How did I do that? How did I talk that fast? Spacey, looks like you got thunderstorms tonight. It looked like we had some thunder boomers billing to the west when I was driving home, but. It don't look like they're going to do nothing out there. Of course, we do have a car show with lots of absolutely amazing looking vehicles out there. So it probably will storm and they'll be hustling and bustling to get them into undercover so they don't get damaged. Uh, did I put the Greenland thing over there? I did. I can close that link then. Okay. And I can close that link as well. Okay, let me go see. This date in history, I have a few minutes. Let's go to the pig. Find out what's going on this date in history. Hambo and Porcus are always so good about coming up with that shit. Thank you, guys. Ew. Shitlery. Today's question. Is this the year the Jackass Party platform declares the Constitution itself hate speech? Uh, they did that a while ago, honey. It's just that you're finally getting the memo. They're a little late on delivering those. You know, Shitlery's server crash and all that. Okay, this date in history, 1752, which basically, in case you don't know, June the 10th, 1752. Channeling his inner child, American icon Benjamin Franklin plays outside in the rain with a kite and a key. Lightning taming science ensues. Um... Oh, good Lord, Ben's right behind me. I'm not bending over. Ain't no way. I know how you are. Uh, this date in history, June the 10th, 1985, after tempting fate by defying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, Coca-Cola pulls its head out of, out of its butt and dumps new Coke like a bad habit. Smart move. This date in history, 1985, another one. Wow, double dipper. 
With their white flags at the ready, French shock everybody, including themselves, by sinking Greenpeace flagship, the Rainbow Warrior. Vim, vim. This date in history, June the 10th, 2002, Big Apple mafioso John Gotti has a disastrous failure of his Teflon coating when he achieves room temperature from cancer in a federal gray bar. And that, my dear children, is going to have to be the end of my little verbal spillage for this evening. Y'all have an absolutely awesome rest of your Friday evening and a totally splendiferous weekend. I am out of here to make room for Vins. So, love you all. And I wish you all enough.